Now, sigh, you might be thinking. Sure, SNO has great writing and great characters, but it's been three videos already and you still haven't talked about the tits. Well, fine, let's talk about the tits. So, my general attitude towards fan service is somewhere on the scale of ambivalence and annoyance. I'm perfectly fine letting it exist in its own little corner of the medium, but when it starts sneaking into otherwise serious shows, I admit that it can become grating. Now, don't get me wrong, I can full well appreciate the need to rub one out to sexy anime babes as much as the next guy, but I view actually watching those anime to be a complete waste of time. Like, yeah, I'll go to image boards and reddit threads and download images and short juicy scenes, but I'm not gonna sit down and waste six hours of my life watching an entire season of just fan service. I mean, one of those episodes has like, what, maybe five minutes of spank-worthy material tops, and then the rest of the episode is just them piddling about after that? But I admit, it is entirely possible that I might still be carrying a bit of a chip on my shoulder from watching so many fan service shows as a teenager. Like, okay, put it like this. All throughout my childhood, I would never eat eggs. Don't know why, just never did. But then a few years ago, I finally tried them and found out that they were really good. So every single day for the next month, I would make various types of eggs for breakfast. And of course, by the end of that month, I could barely look at them anymore without dry heaving. And so followed three or four months where I ate no eggs, and then after that I gained the self-control to only have them occasionally. Similarly, it is entirely possible that watching so many fanservice shows as a teen has left a bit of a bad taste in my mouth. But I think it's safe to say that there are a lot of commonalities and reoccurring elements of fanservice shows that make them deserving of that reputation. For example, as mentioned earlier, I hate when shows that are primarily about other things have a random shower scene or locker room scene just to fill time or sell more Blu-rays. And this is especially egregious when it starts sneaking its way into the better parts of the show. The example my mind always goes to is in the final episode of Shikugan no Shana Season 1, when, during the big climatic action scene when the epic music is playing, Shauna makes a dramatic leaping attack and there's just a prolonged upskirt shot. Like, I'm sorry, was I supposed to be excited and pumped up by the action or turned on right now? Cause it's gonna be one or the other. And it's not even a sexy image or anything. Like, I defy anyone to be turned on by that. It seems like its only purpose was to ruin the tone of the scene, and if that was the case, then mission fucking accomplished, I guess. I also hate when a story has to twist and bend to constantly contrive ways for fan service to happen while letting both the characters come off as being innocent. For example, a guy walks in on a girl taking a bath and we get a prolonged shot of her naked body. This setup is ass-bleedingly contrived. Like, why wasn't the door locked? How did he not hear the water running earlier? How did he not see her clothes in that little in-betweeny room that Japanese houses seem to have? How did he not see the light under the door? How did he not see the steam under the door? Etc, etc. But the reason this is such a common trope in anime is because a lot of people find innocence to be a sexy quality. So scenes like this where the fan service is accidental gives us, the audience, an excuse to see them naked while still preserving that innocence. And of course, it has to be an accident, because otherwise the main guy would look creepy if he was intentionally walking in on a girl changing or whatever. So like I said, it's a pretzel of a story. It starts with the end goal of having a fanservice scene while also keeping the characters innocent, and then has to contrive a way to make that happen. Of course, that's not to say that all fanservice is inherently bad. Quite the contrary, in fact, because it can be used really well. For example, in a show like High School of the Dead that has a style of a trashy zombie beef lick, the stupid fanservice serves to enhance that popcorn movie aesthetic. 
And I also like it when shows like Keijo base its premise around having stupid fan service so that its inclusion feels natural. Now, the commonality between both of those examples is that they are self-aware enough to know that fan service usually detracts from a plot and then uses that to their advantage to better enforce their aesthetic. However, you can use fan service in a smart way too. For example, Kill la Kill can use it to actively enhance the story. In Kill la Kill, Ryuko gains immense power from wearing god robe Senketsu, but in the first few episodes is constantly embarrassed by how skimpy in revealing the form he takes is. But then in episode 3, Satsuki mocks her for feeling ashamed of him, saying that if the end result was her achieving her goals, then she would gladly be naked in front of the entire world to do so. Ryuko then takes that advice to heart, and then only by getting past her embarrassment is able to become much more powerful for doing so. That's an example of fan service being tied intrinsically to the plot and being used to teach us things about the characters. So, to wrap up, I like fan service when it's well thought out and placed into something with care and intent, and tend to hate it when it's forced in where it doesn't belong or used as a crutch for shitty writing. So, where does SNO fall into all of this then? Well, on the would I show this to my parents to convince them anime isn't porn spectrum, SNO writes a jackpoint shit. But for people who aren't immediately turned off by the prospect, I'd say there are two types of distinct fan service in SNO. One of which I like and think actively improves the show, and the other I don't, but also doesn't really detract anything either. The first type is fan service that's being used either as comedy or as the setup for comedy, and I'd barely even call a lot of that fan service. Take, for example, the famous flying panties in episode 2. So famous, in fact, that there were literal community meetups where everyone gathered and threw little mechanical flying panties together, and god, I wish I could have been to one. But the thing about the flying panties is, they aren't really being presented in a sexual way here. I mean, you can tell when an anime is trying to be sexy, and that's not this. There are panties blasting off into the sky Team Rocket style. That's meant to make you laugh, not turn you on. But there are fanservice scenes that are simultaneously sexy and set up to really good jokes. For example, in episode 4, as punishment for the flying panties fiasco, Sahora uses one of Ikros' cards to make it so that whenever Tomoki sees panties while in his house, they'll explode. So to get his revenge, he does this. God, he's such an asshole and I love it! Anyways, a lot of the fan service in the show is like that, mainly being used as the setup for jokes, and I am totally fine with that. After all, a lot of the fun of SNO's comedy episodes is seeing just how insane things can get. I mean, you'd think that the flying panties would be jumping the shark pretty fucking early, but somehow it only manages to get crazier and crazier as time goes on. I think SNO is one of the funnier comedies out there, and it's able to consistently make me laugh, even when rewatching it for the billionth time. The second kind of fan service, though, is what I mentioned hating earlier. The stuff that just appears randomly for no other reason than for the viewer's sake. For example, episode 2 starts off with Sahora getting ready for school and shows an extended shot of her in a bra before cutting to her being dressed and on her way. That scene serves no higher purpose or anything, and it isn't really funny, so I'm not a huge fan of it, but at the same time, it's also not really hurting anything, and I don't know. I've noticed that I tend to try and downplay SNO's fan service a lot. I mean, in the first draft of this script, I spent a long ass time trying to argue that SNO wasn't really a fan service anime, until a friend came along and pointed out how fruitless that endeavor would be, while Ikaros is over there walking around dressed like the sex bot she originally thought she was. But, you know, it's not like she only wears that. She has street clothes too, and we see her in those far more often. 
Not to mention, it's a fucking anime, right? I mean, point me to an action anime that doesn't shove the girls into skimpy fetish outfits and call it armor. At least Ikaros' covers a decent portion of her body, and she also has the added excuse of being a robot, so it's not like the armor really does much in the first- You see? You see? I'm doing it again. There I go doing it again. Why do I keep making excuses for the fan service in this show? Well, I think it's partly because I watch SNO for the excellent plot and characters, so I think I perceive the fan service as being something that's embarrassing and that you just sort of have to get past to enjoy the show proper. Now, that attitude, I know for a fact, is a remnant of my teenage years. Here, story time, you'll like this, but brace yourselves for cringe. So, back in middle school, after I had just watched SNO for the first time and gotten ridiculously into it, I was trying to convince all my friends to watch it as well. So, I was showing them a few clips from season 1, because this is a few months before season 2 had come out, and one of the guys saw Ikaros and said aloud, Wow, she looks like a prostitute! And that made everyone laugh, because, you know, teenage guys. They continued to make fun of her, and in turn me, until I got pissed off and exclaimed, SHE IS NOT! SHE IS THE URANUS QUEEN! <sighs> I swear to Christ that sounded cooler in my head. Yeah, so, as expected, that just caused them to all erupt in laughter, and I'm sure my face turned beet red. Funnily enough, all of them did later end up watching SNO at my behest, and they all really ended up liking it. But even today, they'll still bring up that moment and I will still cringe at the memory. But that's a bad attitude to have, you know. Sure, SNO has fan service, and fan service isn't inherently a bad thing. And even if you don't like it, at least it never gets in the way, you know. Like, I've talked before about how good SNO is at changing between comedy, action, and drama, and one of the reasons it does excel at that is because it knows what does and doesn't work tone-wise for each of those. A great example of this, episode 11, which, by the way, probably has the most fan service of any episode in the show, takes a break at one point to set up some character development for Nymph. And during that scene, there is a perfect opportunity to show an upskirt of Nymph, but they don't do it. Now, keep in mind, she was just in lingerie a few minutes ago, and will be completely naked a few minutes from now. But those were comedy scenes, and this is a serious scene. Showing an upskirt of her right now would only detract from the tone the scene is trying to build, a la that Shikuga no Shana bit. So, they wisely don't do it. They keep the fan service in the fan service scenes, and then when it's time to get serious, they don't let it creep in, even though it could have very easily done so. And even though SNO hails from back in the early 2010s, where it was way more uncommon for eshi shows to actually show nipples than it is today, it can still be really sexy when it wants to be, thanks in part to how rid ridiculously hot all the character designs are. I mean, the animation of SNO isn't usually anything impressive enough to write home about, but fuck me if Sumanazuki doesn't know how to draw a naturally sexy girl. Most of the time, they don't even have to be doing anything overtly erotic to be attractive. They just are by virtue of being well designed. But to call out some specifics, I love how the black bangs contrast Ikros' pink hair, or how sleek and simple the school uniforms are. And this very well might just be my bias talking, but Nymph looks fucking incredible in every outfit the show puts her in. Look at that tiny hat! Look at it! Look at it! It's so cute! Ah! And last but not least, I can hardly forget that the fan service is the entire reason that I watched SNO in the first place. I mean, the boobs are what drew me in when I was a teen, and that gave everything else that's great about the show the chance to give me taste. So, yeah, most of the fan service scenes are used for comedy's sake, and those are great, but I guess even the ones that don't serve the plot aren't inherently bad or anything. Yeah! Yeah! I feel like I really learned something here today. Oh, 
Uh, are you still watching this? Shit, I kind of went into my own head there for a while. Uh, well, I guess there is one last thing I want to mention on the topic of SNO's fan service. So, I talked earlier about how a lot of fan service shows end up with plots that resemble pretzels for how much they have to twist in on themselves to, on one hand, show off fan service while also having all the characters involved come out of it squeaky clean. Well, that isn't a problem for SNO, because in stark contrast to pretty much every other show in the genre, it probably has one of the greatest protagonists of all time. However, that is a whole other separate ordeal. So join me next time as I attempt to analyze the one, the only, Sakurai fucking Tomoki. Continued in part four. Special thanks to my lovely Patreon patrons, Isaiah Christou, Saws Bucky, Forgotten Paladin, Ludwig, Magerline, Mythnut, and Soul. 